Ben Kingsley is here over the course of his 20-year film career. He has played such memorable characters as Mahatma Gandhi and Meyer Lansky. The Oscar winner is now receiving some of his best reviews for his role as the menacing Don Logan in the new film Sexy Beast. In his review, New York Times film critic A.O. Scott wrote, Kinsley jolts the movie like an exposed high-voltage wire. He is pure violence, a sociopath who radiates minutes, even while sitting perfectly still, mouthing pleasantries. Here is a look. Of course not. Are you saying no? No. Is that what you're saying? Not exactly. What are you saying? I'm just saying thanks and all that. Thanks for thinking of me. But I'm just going to have to turn this opportunity down. No, you're just going to have to turn this opportunity, yes. I'm not exactly match fit. You seem all right to me. No, not really, Don. You look fine. I'm not. Do I'm... the job. What? Do the job. No, Don. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. I can't. You can. I can't. That can't. Don, don't do this. Do what? Look. What am I doing? This. This? This what? <laughs> I'm pleased to welcome Ben Kinsley back to this table. Do the job. Do the job. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It's pretty strange watching that scene, you Why? know? Well, when when the elastic's stretched, yeah. it, it, it brings with it its own energy and your own limits and your own capabilities. And quite honestly, and I don't mean this arrogantly, when I look at that clip now, now that the elastic snapped back to Ben, yeah. um, I don't know how I did it. I don't know how I did that scene. I mean, I do know mechanically, but where, the, where that adrenaline and concentration came from must have come from from Don, if you see what I mean, that Don, right. Don, you were in the character, tapping into Don gave me the the right level of energy to to, to play him, uh, and I and I am still quite taken aback at some of the, the those crossfire scenes that, that well, all, they're all crossfire scenes, they're all they're all like um, volleys at Wimbledon tennis, and bang, yeah. bang, 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 constantly. Yeah. Um, Who is he? He is the darkest side of all of us. I think that the um, the screenplay for me jumped off the page because you saw on the page um, an archetype, uh, an archetype within a myth, and you could you could really put this film, this black comedy, whatever we, this love story, black comedy thriller, you could set this on a Greek island two thousand years ago, and call them maybe warriors, gladiators, or or, or, or robber bandits, or thieves. Uh, of one kind or another, smugglers, pirates. The fact is that they are um, a tribal clan. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is tribal honor involved with Don Logan. But to answer your question simply and honestly, um, his, his narrative drive in the film is to bring the dark, mm -hmm. the bringer of darkness, the bringer of chaos, the nemesis, the shadow. And um, that, 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 for me, uh, as an actor is, is such a pure mandate that it's a joy, it's a joy to, to play, to hit that target, you know, to hit that target over and over again. He's darkness. And where do you find the darkness? Just by technique or something else? I, well, I suppose that the technique would be having the right kind of diamond cutter drill to get down and down and down and down and down. That would be the technique. Um, and to keep adding, you know, another shaft of metal onto that drill as it goes down and down and down and down and down into, into, into the depth of me. But the, but the actual stuff that it will tap into, um, the dark stuff that it will tap into to, to come up through the well, if you like, um, is, is, my, is the darker side of my subconscious, is the darker side of my, um, of my memory, my experience, um, the darker side of my acquaintances with var various people, all of which I guess has been collected and assimilated and built up over the years, and uh, I had to tap into that. I didn't use any specific exercises other than walking miles and miles and miles around my house in the country and running, the, running Don's dialogue in my head. That's all I did. That was the, that, that was the drill, yeah. and, and I, I, I tapped into... Um, I was able to access easily and safely um, a violence, um, an obsessive quality, and uh, a neediness, and a collection of wounds that all went to make up 
Don. Okay, and now here, I just want to talk crap a moment. Yeah. I please. hear what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, I hear how, you know, the narration is the, gives you the drill to drive in. I mean, are the, the words that he yeah. has. Yeah. What is it you are remembering? Is it you're remembering your, uh, something you were obsessive about and that gives you and brings to the surface a feeling of obsessiveness? Or are you remembering a moment, a feeling, a time when you were hurt and therefore that brings up <coughs> wounded? I think it's all of those things. Yeah. Um, all of those things that you, you rearrange and put together like a mosaic. And the mosaic is Don Logan. And all the various bits, you know, my bag of bits that I stick together to make this mosaic. <laughs> yes. You know, um, they are they are bits of uh, probably bits of my childhood, yeah. probably um, fragments of people that I've that I've met, uh, that I've that I've spent uh, uneasy and unsettling time with, and also there are aspects of myself um, that I that I empathise with because I think one of Don's primal cries that makes that makes him so in a sense so absurd and and then in turn makes him amusing to watch i I've, I've been with audiences who've laughed mm. with and at don um don is so terrified of being laughed at that that actually the film provokes laughter in the audience mm. um don's inner cry i imagine is i love you therefore you must love you, me right you must love me, and um, I think that 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 was one of the engines that gave me the energy to do the part. What's the difference between what a great actor and a and a, and a simple good actor can do in terms of handling what you just described? I mean, what is it? That, is it that a great actor mm -hmm. or a very good actor can take it and 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 make sure that it comes up as you know, as 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 precise and as finely honed and better than anybody else, and feel the richness of it and translate it. And the acting is being able to not only feel it but translate it. So, whereas in here goes out there. Is that what it is? The best and the better you are as an actor, the better you can do that. I'm I'm sure that's it. I'm sure that um, the the actor, in a sense, is constantly exploring his or her boundaries his or her limits, is constantly exploring where the character ends and that firm uh, barrier as to where the actor begins again. Character and actor meeting and meeting in a way that's, certainly for the cinema, meeting in such a way that it generates a kind of energy that the camera will capture. So that don't my, the energy I used to obsessively learn every every syllable of Don's dialogue, and obsessively um, keep myself on track with all those rhythms, is is exactly parallel to Don's obsessive task of bringing Gal back to London right. to do this particular job. So that there was a, a, a kind of parallel energy, and as uh, as I was becoming him, I was using his kind of obsessive energy. I, just like Don, I had a job to do, yeah. and I had to do this job, and my job was to play him, but I, in a sense, approached, approached it using the same fuel um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, as Don would use. So I'm, I'm always pushing my boundaries to see, you know, to see precisely where the character ends, where I start again, and how far within, within the limits of, uh, you know, within the limits of human possibility I can I can push that boundary without tipping into madness. Mm -hmm. So, um, I suppose to answer your question honestly um, would be to say that the great actor steers very close to madness because because the limits are are honed with a razor blade so that the limit the, the stone wall becomes a membrane. Yeah. It becomes so flimsy, and and you know that one more push in that direction and you will not be you will not be exploring the Holocaust, you will actually be, be in, in it. the Holocaust yeah. itself, and, and that you can't recover from, that rage. Roll tape. Do it. <sighs> I'm really tired. Do it. This is madness. I've had enough of this crime and punishment bollocks. I'm happy here. I won't let you be happy, why should I?
Friday, the Grosvenor, you'll be there. I won't. You will, I told Ted you're doing it. Don't you show me up. No, I won't be there. You will, you missed the Roundtree. No. Yes, Roundtree. No. Yes, Grosvenor. No, Tom. Friday. I won't be there. You will. No, Tom. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> That's the pit bull terrier who will not let go. <laughs> it is it is unacceptable to him. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's almost like if I scream it enough, yeah, it'll happen. That's right. And 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 in it also in that scene, um, is for, was for me the sen the character's absolute inner central central line. I won't let you be happy. Why should I? Yeah. You know, and in the in the myth, if you wanted to describe this myth called Sexy Beast, um, you could say, once upon a time the gods looked down at a man who thought he was happy, and they sent to him <laughs> the unhappiest man in the world. <laughs> world. To tell him you can't be happy. That's I right. will not let you be happy. I won't let you be happy. All right, now here's the one I want you to see. This is putting okay. out the cigarette on the plane. Roll tape. <coughs> Sir, I'm afraid you've got to smoke. What? What do you want? Your cigarette. You have to put it out. Cigarette? What? this. No, I'm not going to put it out. You must. What's that? If you don't, we can't take off. Well, that's your problem, isn't it? It's your move. I'm afraid you no, can't... No, I'm not going to pull it out. You're just going to have to wait till I've finished it. It's simple as that. Why don't you just put the cigarette out? <laughs> What's that, Sancho? Do you want me to cut your hands off? Use it as an ashtray. Yeah, I'll put it out, providing you're prepared to let me stub it out on your eyeball. I'll put it out. Agreeable? No. Here come the gay brigade, look. I'll tell you what. I'll get off the plane. You don't have to do that. I'm happy with that. I'll smash it outside. Open the door. I hope this crashes. I mean, he, <laughs> what kind of he, character are you playing? He doesn't ha he doesn't have any limits. Yeah. So as an actor, I've got I I Ben has to have limits in order to play him, but yes. he he doesn't have any limits. I mean, he he gets he gets off a plane at the beginning of the film and within a matter of hours, 24 hours or so, he's dead because he's he's pursued his his um his objective to the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate without limits, he's dead. Without limits, yeah. yeah. Mm. Where was this film? Spain, southern, uh, the beautiful southern opening. tip of Spain, yeah. yeah. And and the story is what here? The story is um, a, a a a love story and 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 a, a, a dark black comedy uh, to do with tribal honor yeah. and people who have turned their back on a tribe. And the uh, affront uh, and and indignation that I, as a tribal member, feel that somebody refuses to honour our way of life, honour our code, and come back with us just one more time to do something magnificent and beautiful. It happens to be to rob a bank, right? But as we see in the film, the actual heist of the bank, although it's not a large part of the film, balletically and physically is extraordinarily beautiful. Yeah. And, and that they do look like gladiators, that the way they're dressed and, and the, the way they, they move under the water. It, it, they do look like an, a tribe of ancient gladiators. So um, the film is about, it, it is about the tribe wanting to pull somebody back and somebody saying, no, my past is my past and it's over. But of course, um, your past always... You can never always leave. Never leave your past behind you. No. Yeah. You believe that? I do. I do indeed. I'm, I'm, I am sitting here I, as you are. I'm the sum total of everything that's happened to me right up until this second. But you also ought to be controlling your own destiny. You ought to be the master of your own ship and all that stuff. Um, I don't know whether, I, whether I'm able to control my own destiny in as much as the exercise right now, I think, for me, is is to um, is to let go of control. I think I have uh, been. Uh, that's the don side of me, minimally. Yeah. But I have I have been a control freak. I have certainly said to myself on many occasions, I want this to happen. Why doesn't it? And I have made things happen. In other words, I haven't welcomed life's spontaneity. 
and I haven't, I haven't, I haven't to a certain extent allowed life to happen to me. And I'm trying to, trying very hard to, to allow life to happen to me now, because actors are controlling yeah. large segments of their working life by literally in the morning, with their sides and a call sheet, they're told precisely where they're going to be and what they're going to be saying at any given point in that day. It's a very odd exercise. And therefore, to, to, there is no script for me for tomorrow, mm -hmm. for Ben. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen when I leave this studio. And are studio. you happier now because you're not trying to control it and you're letting the flow go? I'm happier, definitely happier, but it, but for, but it is still, for me, relatively slightly scary uh, because um, uh, when, one is, when one is controlling one's life, whatever the, with the, the, the crutches, whatever the suit of armor, they have to go. And there is, there is a, there is a, you know, there's a kind of nakedness when, when the support, the, the old support systems yeah. uh, have to be put down once, once and for all, and that's, and that's quite a struggle. Um, but, but at the same time, I do believe that, uh, that I'm, I feel happier for, for trying to be more in the present and trying to allow um, life to happen to me. Life will happen to me anyway, whether I try and control it or yeah, not. Yeah. So I might as well... I might as well, you know, enjoy going with the flow. Let me take you back for a while here. Yes. Take a look at this. This is from um, 1982. We're talking t almost 20 years ago. Yeah. Roll tape. Here it is. If you would excuse me, Your Excellency, it is our view that matters have gone beyond legislation. We think it is time you recognized that you are masters in someone else's home. Despite the best intentions of the best of you, you must, in the nature of things, humiliate us to control us. General Dyer is but an extreme example of the principle. It is time you left. With respect, Mr. Gandhi, without British administration, this country would be reduced to chaos. Mr. Kinnock. I beg you to accept that there is no people on earth who would not prefer their own bad government to the good government of an alien power. My dear sir, India is British. We're hardly an alien power. Mr. Gandhi, even if His Majesty could waive all other considerations, um, he has a duty to the millions of his Muslim subjects who are a minority in this realm. And experience suggests that his troops and his administration are essential in order to secure the peace. All nations contain religious minorities. Like other countries, ours will have its problems. But they will be ours, not yours. How do you propose to make them yours? You don't think we're just going to walk out of India? Yes. In the end, you will walk out. Because 100,000 Englishmen simply cannot control 350 million Indians if those Indians refuse to cooperate. And that is what we intend to achieve. Peaceful, non-violent, non-cooperation till you yourself see the wisdom of leaving Your Excellency. I have a very dear friend I've known uh, from the age of 16. Uh, we weren't at the same school, but we were both brought up in Manchester. And when he saw that film, he said, and uh, I loved him for saying this. He said, that's the angriest performance I've ever seen on the screen. And I remember in that scene, I was shaking with anger. Because, you know, you tap into that collective disgust of racism mm. and humiliation. And um, I, I do remember that, I, 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 note, I note with pleasure, again, that exasperated sh sigh that my character gives in mid-sentence you know where he has to has to rein in his rage and turn it into extremely eloquent language 
Um, and uh, again, my fuel for that was, was, was anger. Do you look on that because it was so heralded as a performance and as a film? With all that your profession can honor and award and say, you know, I, it, it came 20 years ago. Hmm. 20 years ago. And it is the notion of this place that I am, this thing that I do, is that in part, you know, you are at the mercy of the material you have to work with and mm -hmm. a whole mm -hmm. phalanx of circumstances. Mm -hmm. As I was talking about earlier, you were talking about yeah. the way the Ben Kingsley show is over, the Ben yes. show is over. Yes. You know, yes. here is something that came, you wanted it very madly. I remember the yes. stories of how you got the part. Yes. It made your career. Yes. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely did. Yes. But, you know, if not for Gandhi, where might Ben be? Might be doing stage work back in somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Yes. Um, or do you believe that if it hadn't been this Gandhi, it would have been some other film that would have... You know, I, I, I honestly don't know. Um, there was around... There always is, actually. I can't... This, this I can't talk about in the past tense. There is an ambition in me. Of course there is. Yeah. Um, and there is, there is an ambition in me uh, to be seen and heard uh, in a particular way, in a way that will allow me to be a storyteller for my society. It's a very, very privileged position to, to occupy. Sure, yeah. And um, it's shamanistic and it's ancient and it's, it's beautiful. And I'm part of our ancient storytelling tra tradition. I've always had that sense and I think I've always had that um, connection to that wellspring of energy. Uh, knowing my song as well as singing it, you know? Um, so something else might have emerged round about that time. It's difficult to say. All I can honestly say is that I watched that, um, that clip with immense gratitude. A, for the role, and, and B, for somehow having the history behind me yeah. at, then, at that age, uh, to, be so ab to be able to control that character, because that character was so titanic that he could have eaten his actor and spat out the pieces, you know, <laughs> yes. like Don Logan. I mean, they eat you. Yeah. Otto Frank, they eat you up. Isaac Stern, right. you know, the, they have enormous appetites and, and we are just the fuel f to give them voice. Now, how does a character eat you? In other words, how could Stern in Schindler eat you? Grief. Grief. Um, the so that what you can't get beyond it as a tapping into as as with as with as with Gandhi, uh, tapping into fathomless rage. rage yeah. uh, uh, as with Don, tapping into fathomless loneliness. Uh, therefore, with Isaac Stern, um, finding the the dignity and control and and uh, intelligence to actually not just survive the Holocaust, but act but ensure that others survived as human beings under his and, and Oscar's care. Um, an act of, uh, of monumental intelligence in hell, you know, mm -hmm. the most intelligent man in hell. And, um, and if I, therefore I am exposing my sensibilities to the context in order to function. I've got to, I've got to expose myself to the context. And the context was Poland where we filmed it, and the, con and the even tighter context was, was uh, the Holocaust. And um, <laughs> there were times when I just wanted to walk onto the set and hit somebody. <laughs> yes. You know, and Stephen, I, I, I'm very close to Stephen, I saw him very recently. And Stephen used, to, I remember one morning Stephen said, how are you Ben? And I said, I'm very, very, very angry. He said, let's use it, let's use it. He didn't try and dismantle that, that rage. Roll tape. I didn't. You can finish that page. What did Gert say about this? You just told him how many people you needed and he working 
for me. I'd expect you to talk me out of it. Costing me a fortune. Finish the page and leave one space at the bottom. First, I played Simon Wiesenthal, um, a man who is smitten with guilt that he survived. And um, I have sat with Simon uh, in Vienna and seen how, you know, we were talking earlier about the act of intelligence that gets you through hell, and, and I've seen. Simon attempting to get through a sentence and he was telling me the story of um, the liberation of Mauthausen and everyone had a flag but he said the Jews had no flag so one man took his shirt off his blue and white shirt and they cut it up and they made and his voice stopped his voice just stopped in mid-sentence just stopped the gulf, the gulf in the middle of that man's sentence, there it was. And you could see this, you know, this barely alive man taking, I believe the man who took his shirt off died an hour later, he told me. He finished the sentence mm. and said that man actually didn't survive, he, he died. And then Simon used to have this gesture of wiping the tears sideways across his face like this, which is a gesture I've never forgotten. And um, then, of course, I, I, uh, I uh, was persuaded by Stephen to do Schindler's List. Persuaded? Yeah, because I was frightened of the Holocaust. I was frightened of going back to the, the Holocaust. I was frightened of it, because you do tip into rage and grief. And um, they're not my closest allies, those two <laughs> guys. Um, and uh, those two demons. Those two demons are not my closest allies, and yet again, they might be. You know, we don't know. Maybe our demons are our closest allies. We certainly have to live with them. And um, uh, of course, Isaac Stern, who again survived, I had the privilege of meeting his wife because by, by the time we filmed Schindler's List, he'd been dead a while. And then number three was Otto Frank. And um, and uh, my acquaintanceship with, with this unspeakable, indescribable, never to be forgotten, possibly never to be forgiven part of history, um, has, I think, opened up an, uh, some empathy in me that very few people perhaps are, are fortunate enough to have. It's a painful empathy, but... Um, but I feel this, a strange acquaintanceship with that part of history, and I feel a lot of uh, I feel a lot of ghosts sometimes. A lot of ghosts are um, are, uh, are with me, mm. in a sense. I don't mean that remotely disrespectfully. I just feel that there's there's something as a storyteller. Mm. Uh, there's something there that's that's looking after me and provoking me and saying, "Go on, Ben. Go on, Ben." Go on, tell him about that one, Ben. So you can't stop? Can't stop. It's had a tremendous impact on Stephen, too. Yes, indeed. Yes, in indeed. terms of commitment. Show a foundation, yeah. interviewing thousands of, of survivors. There they are, on disc. Fewer and fewer alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is the point. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you've had a remarkable, uh, a good actor who's had an opportunity to work with good directors. Yeah. 
Uh -huh. Cross. Extraordinary. Yeah. Extraordinary. Stephen. Mike Nichols. Yeah. Polanski. Yeah. Levinson. Yeah. Pat Burrow. Yeah. And Great I, collaboration. Mm. Extraordinary. And the director here was a first-time director. Jonathan. Yeah. So he brought, he brought to, to the day, to the um, sexy beast. Mm? To the sexy beast. He brought to the sexy beast. Um, an insistence that nothing would go on the screen that he'd seen before. And Jonathan has this wonderful way of tapping his chin and looking at looking at the looking at the setup and he goes, No, 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 no. Seen it before. Seen it before. I'm gonna change this guys. And you know, the setup has changed. Camera yeah. angles, lights. Yeah, you, know. you get a feeling of that in the beginning. Yeah. In the first five minutes of the film. Yeah. Great to see you as always.